Audio reading texts. The Little Prince was awarded the first prize of the Arab Reading Challenge competition by a great prince, the Emir of Dubai. Our Little Prince's name is Muhammad Farah Jeloud, who managed to stand out from the 3.5 million candidates after being listed among the 240 finalists. In Dubai, with much encouragement from his modest family, the seven-year-old Algerian champion read some 50 books and even wrote a small one. He was offered a $150 check to finance his higher education in the presence of the Algerian Minister of Education at Dubai Opera. Text 2, page 31 Muhammad Fraz speech at the Arab Reading Challenge Award Ceremony in Dubai. I read so that I can learn. I'm a pupil who is very keen on reading because reading is necessary for my mind, just like the food I eat, or the water I drink, or the air I breathe. Reading is the mind's food. It's a religious obligation, not just an extra, superficial activity as the writer Abbas Mahmoud al akkad once said. Reading is a criterion for evaluating nations. The Greek philosopher Aristotle was once asked, how can you evaluate a man? He replied, ask him about what he reads and how many books he can read. Text 3, page 32 The Second Grader who traveled over 30 hours to attend the closing ceremony. Told Gulf News he is very happy to have won the competition and is very grateful to his parents who encouraged him to read. Reading 50 books for the competition. Jalud said his favorite book is an Arab book called The Caveman and the Stone Age. It's a dream, it's a dream said Jalud's father when asked about his son's accomplishment. Muhammad has always been so smart and quick to understand and analyze books. He is quite active and has an imagination that he develops through reading. He's also very much into karate, said the proud dad. Palestinian teacher Hanan al-Rob attended the award ceremony as a judge. Reading books expands children's thinking, their ability and knowledge. When you read, you are strong. And you can do more, she said. Text 1. Page 73 After a 10-hour journey in a wagon drawn by three mules, I was glad to see the town of Setif standing on bare hills in the middle of a plain. No habitations were near save a few Arab tents and gurbas. On entering the town, my eyes were refreshed by the pretty gardens and boulevards of Setif, which is still, as it used to be in the time of the Romans, a military station of great importance. There are about 3,000 French soldiers in the garrison of the town. Today, the open-air museum, in which are really interesting relics, is on the common promenade, and the children amuse themselves knocking off the noses and the fingers of the statues. Under the Romans, Setif was called Sitifis Colonia, and was the capital of Sitifia Mauritania. In the Middle Ages, Arab traveler El Bekri described the cotton plantations and cornfields that used to flourish in this plain. But under the Turkish government it decayed and its agriculture vanished. An important Arab market is still held there every Sunday, at which 8,000 natives attend. Text 1, page 99. The ancient Greeks thought our eyes emitted rays, like a laser, which enabled us to see. 
the first person to realize that light enters the eye, rather than leaving it, was the 10th century Muslim mathematician, astronomer and physicist Ibn al-Haytham, 965-1040. He invented the first pinhole camera after noticing the way light came through a hole in window shutters. The smaller the hole, the better the picture, he worked out. And set up the first camera obscura, from the Arab word, camera, for a dark or private room. His findings provided a basis for modern optics, i.e. the study of light and sight. Text 2, page 99. Many modern surgical instruments are of exactly the same design as those devised in the 10th century by a Muslim surgeon and physician called Al-Zarawi, 936-1013. His scalpels, small knives, bone saws, used for cutting, forceps, with two long parts used for picking up and holding things, scissors and many. Of the 200 instruments he devised are recognizable to a modern surgeon. It was he who discovered that catgut used for internal stitches dissolves away naturally, a discovery he made when his monkey ate his lute strings, and that it can be also used to make medicine. Capsules Text Page 139. Why learn about litter? There are health risks associated with litter, such as the carriage of disease to young children. Litter ruins the look of our environment, kills wildlife and causes fires. Discarded food, such as apple cores and banana skins, attracts rats and mice. Knowing this will change the behavior of people in Scotland for generations to come, ensuring that we keep Scotland beautiful. Litter in school A playground that is covered in litter makes parents and visitors think that pupils don't care about the buildings, the grounds or each other. If children work and play in a littered school, it doesn't encourage them to put their own rubbish in the bin. Many schools have given rewards to pupils who have helped with tidying their classrooms or schoolyard at the end of the day. Litter in the community Pupils often involve themselves in working with neighborhood residents to clean up these areas just beyond the school gates and local streets adjacent to the school site. They should regard litter. Clearing is a positive environmental action, not as a punishment. They should also understand that litter prevention improves the environmental quality of the school and its neighborhood. In my Scottish towns and villages, pupils have educated a litter pick in neighboring streets and asked the council to add more bins. Organizing a regular litter pick in the community gives young people an understanding that the litter problem and putting litter in the bin doesn't just happen in school but should happen everywhere. <laughs>